Not a day I'll be surprised. You haven't seen him at all yet? He wiped our feet but away a year from, ago, so he might not I didn't know uh, uh, oh, Hebrew man, a year ago. I went to fucking jail. Like, well, I didn't know shit about Hebrew a year ago. The Most High made me a quickening spirit. Aromatic, that's and that's uh in the Middle East basically. Alright? Uh that's Iraq, uh Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iran, all in that area. That's where um, uh, uh, a lot of the aromatic languages came from. Alright? From Ur of the Chaldees. Yes, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is really Armenian. But we took up, yeah, we took up the Hebrew doctrine and the Hebrew God. Yes, yes. The, the, the first uh, Arabic people were dark-skinned. Remember, Abraham was what? He was a dark-skinned man, right? And his and uh, uh, Ishmael, which was the Ar Arabics come out of, their mother was Hagar, an Egyptian. So if your daddy is aromatic and he's dark-skinned, your mother's Egyptian and she's dark-skinned, what are you going to come out? Dark skinned. So the first uh, Arabics are what? Dark skinned. That's why those people that's up and those people that's in Arabia right now, yeah, we know that they're still us, but they got into, they intermingle with the so called white man. That's why they skin turning. Same thing with the Asian. How they make them? When you look up Buddha, look up the images of Buddha. Buddha had cornrows. The way they shape it. Now who wear cornrows? Us. Yes, they He ain't gonna have no cornrows, right? Ain't no cornrows gonna be on his head. But cornrows be on our head. So Buddha was really what? Buddha was a fucking black man that they worshiped that went off, he went off of scripture. It was a good thing that they were worshiping, worshiping a Hebrew Israelite. It was a bad thing because they he wanted him to be worshiped. We're not asking for people to worship us. All we're stating is if you're another nation, the Bible states for you to bow down and lick the so dust off our fucking feet. Gonna, when he come back, he's gonna, he's Not because we're being mean, but because the Bible stated it. And you must do it. In order for me to go ahead and save you and your family, you're going to lick the dust off my fucking feet. Now, if you're an Israelite, you ain't got to lick the dust off my feet. All you got to do is come home. If you're another nation, you got to lick the dust to get the salvation. That's the only reason we and don't here. mean that no, just because you lick the dust once, don't mean that you're gonna get it. So let's say you lick the dust. Let's say uh, uh, you wasn't of this nation, you were a different nation, and you lick the dust for three months. But then you miss that one day. I'm gonna hold you accountable. I'm, I'm, I'm like, like you missed that one day. I'm like, no, you didn't lick the dust at all. And somebody will say that's not fair. That's not fair. I'm a king. I rule over Listen, you. Bro. You're my possession. How are you going to tell me what's fair and what's not? You can't. The reason why the so-called America is, is shut down is because everybody can say what the fuck they want to say to their king, to their president. Now, if you overstep boundaries too much, what's going to happen? Secret Service going to come over there and get you. But we've been speaking about this motherfucker ever since we came out here. Why ain't circus? Uh, why haven't they came and get us? Because they already put this uh, stigmatism out in the whole world that we're crazy. The Hebrew Israelites are just crazy people. We're radicals. We're not gonna do anything. We just speak the word of the Messiah. They don't actually do anything. It's because we're waiting on our power, man. We're waiting on our power. And you need to read. And so when you come back, you can ask your questions to see if you've been studying. We coming out tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Tomorrow too? Yep. Yeah, we don't have to bring your Bible. We don't have like 2 to 6. Right. We tell that to everybody. Whatever. Make sure you Whenever bring your Bible. Now, if we're, if we're here to mislead you, Bible, would I tell you to bring your Bible? Nope. No. Like, we're not saying, no, look, make sure you leave back, your Bible man. at home stop, stop using that as and just oh, go off excuses. my word. No matter how somebody that's going to mislead. I'm telling you, I'm going to get up. All right. And I'm gonna come and I'm gonna tell him I'm gonna bring my book and oh, I got you. Put your back in his book. And you probably here. I am. I'm gonna do that. Right? Start putting because remember, this is this is your salvation. This is your sword, man. Without this, you're dead. So much break, man. You gotta read. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Do you have a King James version? Yeah, I got a King James version. 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 And we'll give you the corrections of, of, of those words. It's Friday. Okay. It's Friday. That'll start right there. Yeah. Go ahead and get yourself a Bible, man.
I wouldn't say it if it, if it wasn't for a benefit for you. You getting the Bible is not going to help me. You getting the Bible is going to benefit you. If you try to lie to you, you'll be saying no, don't bring the Bible. Another thing that y'all have to start doing, another, you too, brother. Another thing you're going to have to start doing once you come into this knowledge is you're going to have to put the uh, the laws, uh, the Ten Commandments on your uh, uh, door, man. It has to be on your post of your door. That's a law. All right? That means you have to have all Ten Commandments written on your door. You can't even have it in English. You don't have to write it in Hebrew, okay? We do it in Hebrew because we're, we speak Hebrew. We understand it. You guys are barely learning, so the best thing to, for you to do to keep the covering on, on your house is to have the Ten Commandments on your door, man. Have them on your post. And don't put it on the outside where everybody else could rip it off. Put it on the inside where only the people that could come into your house will see it. So every time before you leave, you see the Ten Commandments. Go ahead, brother. This is uh, Surat chapter 7, verse 15. Come on. Hate not laborous work, neither hus husband, hus oh, how you say this? Hus husband, hu husbandry, husbandry. Salaki. It says, hate not laborous work, neither husbandry, which the Most High have ordained. Mm -hmm. So which means, you know, you do your work for your own benefit. Yeah. Everything that you do at your work is for your money, for your, for your benefit. So we said, don't hate that. And you can't hate this neither. Bro, you know what? So, so you gotta go to work, and then you gotta do this uh, work too. Which actually goes with the, uh, the scripture. Uh, not, uh, not the scriptures. Uh, uh, when we told uh, the pastor that we're husbandmen, we're no longer prophets because we have a husband. We're actually um, um, teaching you how to be a husband. I'm not teaching you how to be a prophet. All you gotta do is read the Most Highest words in spirit and the truth. You're a prophet. Because everything's before is right here. Yeah, go ahead, please, please. I just wanted to say this. Um, you know, my brother just read as far as like going to work and coming out. I do that too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, I asked the Most High to give me the job because we didn't have much for the camp. You know what I'm saying? So the Most High gave me the job. So I've been building this up slowly but surely. And Duh. when I first started, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I had started slacking on my reading because I was tired because I hadn't worked in so long. So I prayed every day. I asked the Most High to give me spirit to uh, be able to go to work and come out. Cause that's, you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's that's no excuse. To the most high, that's not right. an excuse. Because if you can work for yourself, you can do the exactly. most high work. So yeah, now that, when that, I go to work, now when I go to work, I come out here all the time and I told my brothers, I have energy. The most high gave me that strength that I asked for. Yeah. Because I believe in, I believe in y'all by showing me how to He been giving me that strength. So now I get out of work and I, every day I get out of work. I come straight here from work. I stand up all day and then I come out here and stand up for about five, six, one hours. Yeah. But that's what I gotta do to show my father that he's serious, That I'm man. serious and sincere, and I'm trying to make it. I'm not trying to get this fucking wrath that he about to bring upon these heathens, man. This shit about to be serious. Y'all, ain't none of you niggas ready for this shit. Y'all think y'all is, but y'all don't see it, Let me read this. This is right. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 11. Then I looked on all the works that my hand had brought, which is made, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation a spirit, and there was no prophet under the sun. Now, who wrote that? That was uh, Solomon. Solomon. Yeah, he right? had everything, man. And then uh, before Yahweh was shy, Solomon, was, there was nobody wiser than Solomon. And that was a wise statement. He said, "All oh, everything that you work for in this earth is vain. Vexation. And vexation, which means it's all it's going to do is fuck you up mentally. Because you're going to be like, damn. I'm trying to build up my kingdom for me and my kids, and then your kids is ungrateful ass sons of bitches. Right. So worthless. damn, I built this up for to give it to them, and they don't even deserve it. Man. Vain means worthless. That's a huh. look up the word. It's vain worthless. Means worthless. Which means it was, it was best for me not even to, even to try to build that shit up. It was best for me to uh, 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 to put a cold shoulder onto my son. The most I says you're not supposed to be laughing with your kids. Especially your son. You, smell, you ain't supposed to show your son no liberty at all. That's being stern and firm and hardened. What does the mother say? Don't be too hard on my baby. You keep baby in his ass, he gonna turn 21, he gonna still go to you. He ain't never gonna stand like a man. The father says, no, from the jump, you gonna be a fucking man. Stand the fuck up. Oh, he's only two men. So what, fuck what? Stand the fuck up. You ain't gotta be that hard on him. If I don't be hard on him, you think somebody else is gonna be nice on him? So if, am I protecting my son by being hard on him? Yes. 
I'm protecting my son by being hard on him. Because if I was lenient on him, he would be a soft ass little bitch. That's why we have a bunch of soft ass bitches around here, man. That's a fact. All these little niggas is bitches. And that's all the moms do. You hear them all saying that shit. Don't do that to him. Don't be right. so rough. Don't hit now, him. Now, if this wasn't the true power of Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, why is it that this nigga still got to point and talk about us mm -hmm. down the street? Just like the other coons did. Yeah. Remember, you was there, remember? Yeah, that's that uh, hunchback. Come on. That's that hunchback. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the hunchback, uh, uh, the hunchback uh, uh, from Notre Dame. Let me read this. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 16. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of fools forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall be forgotten. And how, and, and how dieth the wise man as the fool. Which means, that, that's well, talking about reincarnation. That's what I was really talking about. Huh? He was saying that uh, really anyone, uh, all the knowledge is the knowledge is Try Proverbs 10. Right. Yeah, he's talking about as far as yeah, because everything is reincarnated. Be, reincarnation does exist. So that's what he's talking about. You're not gonna, he says there's no remembrance when you come back. Come. That's why he made that statement. If, if, if there's no remembrance, what you gonna remember if you've never been? Right? It says, For there is no remembrance of the wise than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is. And the days to come shall be all forgotten. And and how and who died the wise man as the fool. Therefore I hated life, because the work that I wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I shall leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And don't nobody want to leave that hair sister, really nobody else, even your son, because you know your son ain't gonna do it the way you did. You're gonna be like, just leave the state in there. You know, you'll be like, I know I had it like this, I know he gonna fucked up. You don't ever think nobody can do it the way you want to do it. And it's just, you know what I mean? It's vain, because it's just being vain. It says, Yay, I hated my labor, which I have taken under the sun, because I shall leave it unto the man that shall be after me. <coughs> And who knoweth whether he is Salakia? And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yea, shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. So even you just, because you don't even want to pass it down because you know he might fuck it up. That's being vain. Because he ain't do it the way you did it. And you see that in the white movies all the time, how they don't ever want to pass any hairs down to their son. They'll give it to somebody else. Because yep. they son be some old cracked out fiend motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And they don't ever want to give it to him. They want to, they'll rather pass it off somebody else. And that's why a lot of these kids, these white, they be hating their fucking dads trying to kill them and shit. Yep. Over that money. But they, they, and they do be, they do, they be successful with it. As far as killing their parents for the this money. Bro. Yes. They'll go ahead, they'll go ahead and, and, and uh, kill their mother and their father just to get that inheritance that was supposed to come to them anyway if their mother and father died naturally. But they don't want to wait. I want the money now. I asked you for a hundred thousand. You're worth a million. I asked you for a hundred thousand. You got it. Why don't you just give it to me? That's the so-called white man. And he wants that mentality for who? For Jake's. To do that to who? Not to their daddies. Their daddies not in the house. So who they gonna do it to? They mamas. And what mama gonna do? Backslap the taste out your fucking mouth. And then when she's low on money, what's she gonna tell you to do? I just, I don't know how we gonna make it. If only there was some way you could get some type of money. Well, Jake only knows one way of getting fucking money quick. So when the mother says that, what she really say? Go out there and sell some drugs and give me the money. Go out there and be a whore. Look, daughter, look. Don't you know what you got between your legs is a gold mine? Everybody wants some. Even when you give it up to the first person, the next person still wants it. You got a gold mine right there. As long as a woman got a twat, she shouldn't be poor. How do I know that? That's the same shit that my mother told my sister. You know what I told my daughter? I told her, don't be no whore like your mother. Why? Because she jumped off the next dick and went over and, and went with that nigga when she was married to me. 
Now, is that not a whore? Now, I got this. Right. You got it? Yes. Good, good. Go ahead. Go ahead. You bring